Let's start with holy water. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, Alpha Omega. Sapor, Arepo, Tenet, Opera, Rotas. God the Father, the Most High, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, God of Holy Ghost, of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All the Archangels, Saint Michael, Saint Jopiao, Saint Samuel, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, Saint Uriel, Saint Zetikel, and all our guardian angels. Hail Kahata Domini, Hail Kahata Domini, Hail Kahata Domini, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, and all the saints in heaven. Grant me, O Lord, the power to my hands, for wiping of all stain, so that without defilement of my mind and body, that I might serve thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trained my hands for war, and my fingers for battle. My mercy, my safeguard, my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, in which I take refuge, who subdue people under me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Pater Noster, we ask in charity, sanctificate your nomen tuum, ad benia venim tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo at in terra. Pater Nostrum quotidianum, dat nobis odi, et timite nobis temite nostra, sicut et nos temitimus territoribus nostris, et ne nos in tucas in tentationem, set libera nos amalo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu mulieribus, ad benedictus fructus, ventris tu Iesus. Santa Maria, Madre Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nun en in hora multis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio, e Spiritu e Santo, sicut in et principio, et nun et semper, et in secula seculorum, Amen. In nomine Patris, et Pili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Abba, Sator, our Father, the Almighty, who created heaven and earth. Abba, Sator. They don't laugh for to say, well, I know what they really meant because I went and I did my homework and found out that they said this and they said that. But no, no, no. That's the point. He missed, he missed the point entirely. No, they knew what they really meant. That is to say, the bishops and the priests of the Novus Ordo who received it in their dioceses, in their churches, and on their tables, and they presented it to the people. They knew what it was really all about. They understood. And Colonel Ottaviani saw it too. He saw the implications of it. He said there are so many things that are implicitly approved in this thing. That one can pick out this and pick out that and pick out the other thing and say, well, this can be spun in a Catholic sense. We can understand this in a Catholic sense. And, uh, there, yeah, there are so many things like that. It's death by a thousand cuts. But, uh, you know, the fact is you have to interpret the Novus Ordo in a Catholic way. You have to interpret it that way. But it doesn't necessarily lend itself to being interpreted that way. It lends itself to being interpreted in a very different way. And that's the point that Cardinal Ottaviani made. The other point that uh, uh, Dom La, uh, Lanford zeroes in on is the offertory. He said the offertory that a mass had taken a lot of, a lot of uh, criticism. And he makes some points there that I think are just totally off the wall. Um, I mean, again, he makes the point, well, you know, in the past liturgy,
strategies. Um, often the offertory was very simplified and didn't make a very strong statement. Uh, and sometimes it was just a matter of taking the bread and wine and putting them on the on the altar, and that constituted basically the offertory. Like, okay, we're going to consecrate the body, the body and blood of Christ here. <laughs> so he, he makes an argument that you, you can't make an argument based upon what is not said in the new order offertory because it, there were traditional offertories that didn't have much to say, you know, in past offertories. But, um, but then he goes on from there, actually, and he tries to make a case that the Novus Ordo offertory is actually more orthodox than the traditional mass offertory. And what, what the, the argument that he's using there is that, you know, when the, when the priest begins the offertory in the traditional mass, he holds up the, the host that he's got to consecrating for himself. And he refers to the unsplotted, unsplotted oblation, the pure holy oblation that is being offered for the sins and negligences and failures in himself. Um, those who are present, the Catholic people throughout the world, living and deceased. And so he's saying that, well, it sounds as though the priest is holding up this host before it's consecrated, and even referring to it, like anticipating that it's going to be consecrated. But before it's consecrated, he's already referring to it, we offer this oblation to you. you know? So, in other words, he's, he's making an argument there that, well, you're anticipating the consecration by holding up the host and then holding up the chalice and saying, this is, we're, we're going to be offering you the oblation, the pure and unspotted oblation for the remission of sins. Um, he says, that's, that's, in, that's jumping the gun, okay? Because we haven't even got into canon, let alone to the consecration yet. Um, so it's premature to even be talking about this when you've got just bread and wine on the table of heaven in the tradition. But he says in the in the Nova Sordo, um, they, they're very explicit. They're, they're, they have bread, they're offering the bread, and they're offering the wine. The fruit of the vine, the fruit of the field, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. So, in a sense, he's trying to make the argument that uh, in the Nova Sordo Offertory, they're, they're actually anti they're looking forward to the time when the bread and the wine will become the oblation. But they're not, uh, shall we say, anticipating with the bread and the wine that they bring with the offertory that it represents the oblation already. Uh, the argument falls pretty flat, I think. It's a, it's a very false argument. When you look at what is said in the Nova Sordo, um, it, you know, it, it basically um, it sounds as though we are offering God our bread and wine that we bring to the altar, and that's what we're offering Him. Okay. And that it's, He's going to change it into our spiritual bread and our spiritual drink. But again, that remains undefined. You have to go looking elsewhere to try to find what, what that actually means. Okay. But the, the, he make, does make a third point, and that is about the word sacrifice. And I think that very much applies to his treatment of the offertory question, too. And um, when, you, when you are praying the offertory prayers to the Mass, the traditional Mass, you're talking about the pure and clean, unspotted oblation that is offered for the reparation for sins. That is never explicitly mentioned in the new offertory. Never explicitly mentioned in the new offertory. Um, which is why it can appeal so well to non-Catholics and Protestants in general, because they don't believe the Mass is really a sacrifice of reparation for sin. They don't believe it is the unbloody sacrifice of Calvary. The new offertory of the, the, of the new Mass leaves that up to interpretation entirely. Now, uh, Lankford says, but that's the Catholic interpretation, so that's the, that's the interpretation it should have, right? But you say, well, that's not what it says. It's all implicit. And basically, one can interpret it any way he wishes. The fact that they took something that was so explicit and they made it obscure is an indication of their intention to deliberately obscure the faith in the new mass and to leave it as an ecumenical service open to all kinds of interpretations. 
That's exactly what the new mass is, and that's why it's so deadly. Um, but the third thing that he mentions, I say, is a sacrifice. And he mentions, okay, well, sacrifice is mentioned so often in the new tradition, in the new liturgy. Sacrifice is mentioned so often in the traditional liturgy. But it's a different. If it's a different kind of sacrifice, you know, in, in the canon of the traditional mass, uh, in the very first prayer of the canon, it does mention the sacrifice of praise. Okay, sacrificium laudis, a sacrifice of praise. Is the mass actually a sacrifice of praise? Of course it is. Is the mass a sacrifice of thanksgiving? Of course it is. It is a sacrifice of adoration, uh, a sacrifice of praise. It is a sacrifice of supplication. The four purposes of prayer are realized, and the four purposes of, sac purposes of sacrifice are realized in the mass, in the true mass. But if you look at the, at the new Mass, yes, they mention the sacrifice of praise or adoration. Yes, they, re they recognize the sacrifice of, of uh, thanksgiving to God. And they would even recognize the sacrifice of supplication, asking God's blessing. But what is missing in the new Mass, which is so prominent in the traditional Mass, is the sacrifice of reparation. The sacrifice of reparation for sin. Now, Tom, you can offer a sacrifice of praise. You can, you can, you can adore God, <coughs> and you can thank God, and you can supplicate God's mercy and ask Him for His blessings. But there was only one who could actually offer the sacrifice of reparation for sin, and that is Jesus Christ. And that what makes the mass the mass. It's not just a sacrifice of praise. It's not just a sacrifice of thanksgiving. It's not just a sacrifice of supplication. There was only one victim who could offer himself in reparation for the sins of mankind. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. If you take that out of the Mass, there's no Mass left. It's a Protestant service, at best, at best. If you take that sacrifice of reparation out of the Mass, and you look and you read, time and time again, you want to see the new Mass. Sacrifice of praise, sacrifice of thanksgiving, sacrifice of praise, sacrifice of thanksgiving. And then you get to the narrative of institution where they tell you the story of Jesus at the Last Supper, taking the bread and wine, saying, this is my body which will be shed for you and for all, you know, and this is my blood which will be shed for you, uh, you know, under the remission of sins and the forgiveness of sins. They took the words Mysteria Fide out and put it elsewhere at the end. Um, so they're saying that Jesus died on the cross for us, far, far away, a long, long time ago. And we know that. Protestants all acknowledge that. Jesus died on the cross for us uh, for the remission of our sins. But that's very different from saying, this is the sacrifice. This is that sacrifice, right here, right now. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins is happening right here in front of me on this altar when he becomes present here. And he prays for me as he prayed for the, uh, for the, for the cross. He's praying uh, for mercy from God the Father remission of my sins, my justification in the eyes of God, and ultimately my sanctification and then glorification in heaven. This, the sacrifice of reparation is something that has been so watered down, some would even go so far as to say, it's been eliminated from the new mass because it is the standing that it was the sticking point between Catholic and everything else that called itself Christian. They rejected that. The mass was the unbloody sacrifice of Calvary. But you, if you take that out of the Mass, there is no Mass left. It's the very essence of the sacrifice of the Mass, the sacrifice of Calvary. Uh, that's where the attack went. So he talks about uh, the use of the word sacrifice in the new Mass. And he says, well, look, the concept of sacrifice is still there. I say, well, yeah, the sacrifice of uh, praise is there. The sacrifice of thanksgiving is there. The sacrifice of, of supplication is there. But other than giving you the story of Jesus die, you know, consecrating and dying on the cross for us, uh, back when, uh, on the other side of the ocean, a long time ago, where does it say that this is that sacrifice of reparation that Jesus offered on the cross? This is it, right here, right now. And if it doesn't, if it's not that, it's not the Mass. And I don't think John Lamford actually ever addressed that point. So uh, I still stand with Cardinal Tapiani. Yeah. Uh, he knew what he was looking at, 
and you hear the tragic choice that Catholic people would have to make. It's as though he saw what Lanford did not see. Lanford wrote this, by the way, I think it appeared like in January of 1970 in French, okay? And the Italiani intervention, I think, it occurred uh, September, I thought, of 1969, so just a few months before. So Lanford shot back an answer to the doctrinal questions raised by Ottaviani. And then uh, before that a year was out, supposedly Cardinal Ottaviani wrote to Lanford and thanked him and said what he wrote was very significant and very helpful. And um, it, it even kind of indi indicated that uh, Cardinal Ottaviani's signature on the, on the critical treatment of the Novosoro was not entirely, you know, given with full consent or full knowledge or somehow. Uh, but when, when that came out, Cardinal Ottaviani supposedly, uh, supposed uh, praising of Lanford's uh, critique, of his critique, uh, there was a, a general cry that went out that this was not honest. That Cardinal Ottaviani, in fact, uh, was almost blind, and his secretary foisted this upon him for his signature. And there were those who were saying, well, you know, Cardinal Ottaviani did sign the, the brief critical, you know, assessment of the Novus Ordo, uh, but he was almost blind, so he didn't know what he was doing then. But that doesn't seem to be the case. What does seem to be the case is when they had him sign this quasi-retraction, that was slipped under his eyes, and he signed that without actually knowing what he was saying. There is plenty of evidence that he never retreated from his original position in, uh, in, in well, just seeing the tragedy of the Novus Ordo. And by the way, history is what it is. It is borne out the truth of what Cardinal Antami Ani wrote in spades. I mean, everything that he warned about happened in rapid order. Uh, and Lanford, for all his attempt to defend the doctrinal teaching in the Novus Ordo, could only stand there and watch what was happening and say, well, you know, I, I wrote the doctrinal defense of the Novus Ordo, it really, really is Catholic and should be understood as Catholic, and all around him, think, you know, everything, the faith is blowing up everywhere. And, uh, you know, there are mass defections of the faith, and uh, but it's being offered uh, on the tables, you know, the so-called Catholic churches around the world is, is nothing but blasphemies and sacrileges. You know, the, the reality has a way of asserting itself, regardless of the fantasies that we uh, use to try to try to justify the unjustifiable. Yeah. And that's what Lanford did there. Yeah, it's amazing, I think, to see. In nomine Patris, et Pili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. It's my opinion, the priest Langford, Langford, he's the Lucifer of that time until now. The Lucifer of that time until now. He deceived a lot of people that time until now. They deceive you the Novus Ordo Mass. And I would like to tell you, those fallen angels, Lucifer, seated on God's throne, and these angels who were just listening, and Lucifer was kicked out and sent to hell, Guyana. Not only that, even those angels who are just listening to Lucifer was also fallen. I want you to understand the Nobis Ordo Mass is a Protestant. You, Protestant Mass is a blasphemy, it's a sacrilege, it's an insult. As I said, forget the Nobis Ordo Mass. Go to Latin Mass. 
to receive, to witness the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, to receive the grace, the sanctifying grace, the capital B blessing, and the reparation from Jesus Christ. That's what is missing, the reparation. Because it's only Jesus Christ that will save us, not the Protestant. Langford Gaslighting the novice order. They dis he deceived you. He is the Lucifer of that time. Please forget the novice order mass and attend the Latin mass. I've been fighting for this and I learned the truth. Learn the truth. And you will be set free. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Understand. Don't have a small brain. Your small brain is so simple to understand and you still don't understand. Please attend Latin Mass. Forget the Novice Ordo Mass. You are, you are practicing blasphemy, sacrilege, and insult to the Father, to Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and Blessed Mother Mary. I end this with Angel. There are four symbols of the Holy Ghost. Dove, fire, water, candlestick lamp. We have the three candles representing the Holy Trinity. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. We have the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. They're here. And the Blessed Candle. Unum Sanctum Catholicum et Apostolicum Iglesia. 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 One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Viva Bigeno, Viva Archbishop Lefebvre, long live Bigeno. Please, you want to witness the sacrifice? Attend Latin Mass. You want to receive the sanctifying grace? Attend Latin Mass. You want to receive the capital B blessing? Attend Latin Mass. Forget. The Novice Ordo Mass, Bergoglio's Church, Pope Francis Church. And as I said, don't be deceived by Langford, who is representing Lucifer, the father of lies. He is the son of his father, the devil. Please, he is not the only the devil. There are many clergies, bishops, archbishops, cardinals, and pope. And please attend Latin Mass. And have a reparation. Jesus Christ will give you reparation. Receive this reparation.
En nombre de Patria, se pide Espíritu Santo. Amén. Angel, Angel, I cannot see you, Angel. Good morning, Angel. Bye bye now. Okay. Show your teeth, Angel. Smile. Angel, Angel, show your teeth. Bye bye. We love you, Angel. Bye bye. We love them. Okay. Attend, we're going to attend Latin Mass, okay? Forget the Nobis Auto Mass, okay? Bergoglio's church. It's not a true church, okay? Cardinal Octaviani. He's our hero. Okay, bye-bye. God bless him. Okay, we'll pray for him. Okay, bye-bye now.